Hi there, Bill Hitchcock. We've got a fantastic program to get out to you, something that I've been wanting to do for a very, very long time. Here it is, December 2024, and what we're going to do is we're going to cover each month during this year the seawater surface temperatures that um, go up and down the entire coast of North Carolina. And a couple of things to, to remember, several things to remember. One, it's pretty universal. If you look at December each year, going to be pretty much the same kind of water temperature. You look at June of each year, it's going to pretty much be the same water temperatures. Uh, it, the seawater surface temperatures affect things such as our weather. Uh, it obviously affects fishing, and there's a lot of things we want to get into, and I want to jump right into it because we're going to cover all 12 months. Let's take a look at December. Right now, this was done, uh, this is imagery from December 8th of 2024. Take a look at this. Now, by the way, the chart on the right, the temperature chart, uh, will change as we go along with this program. You'll notice that the gauge will still be there. You'll see the same kind of colors, but the uh, uh, gauge will change as to what the temperatures are. That'll become self-evident as we go. By the way, I'm getting these seawater surface temperatures. They're online. Rutgers, this is from Rutgers University. They've been doing this for a very, very long time. Doesn't cost anything. Uh, and they put they produce product every day. And matter of fact, sometimes several times a day. So if you have an interest for this type of thing, here we go. All right, let's jump back into December 2024. Take a look of, again on the right. You see 47 degrees is the coldest blue. And actually it gets up to about 80 degrees for the uh, warmest of, of the warm. Look at Pamlico Sound. Pamlico Sound is in the 40s right now. And if you head on out from the uh, Cape Lookout areas, that black line, by the way, out to sea in the orange part, that's the 1,000 fathom drop off. And you can see right now, as when we do the show, that the big rock is sitting right on top of the Gulf Stream, right on top of the edge of that warm uh, waters. And as you go, and the other thing I want to point out, if you can see in between uh, from uh, Point of Hatteras down to Cape Lookout, do you see how that warm water is moving on into uh, Raleigh Bay? Those are the warmest waters. As we go into the uh, wintertime, that's where the warmest waters will be in between Cape Lookout and Cape Hatteras during the wintertime. Some of the best drum fishing I've ever done is in February off of Core Banks, and this is why. Now, that is uh, this year. This is uh, December of this year. Let's go on and take a look at, this is uh, January of this year. Now, it's going to progress like this. Notice again, look in Raleigh Bay, that point in between Hatteras and Cape Lookout. See how those warm waters have moved closer on in? They're even touching the beach, Core Banks, Portsmouth Island, that whole area. They're touching there. So January is your one, if you want a hot spot, literally, there it is during the month of um, uh, January. Now, the, the white that you see is cloud in interference. Whenever you see white splotches like that, and sometimes very dark blue, that means thunderstorms. So the white splotches you're seeing on these seawater surface temperatures uh, are clouds. Again, this is January of this year. Let's go on and take a look at the, uh, the next picture. We're going into February. Now, notice that cold water that has come down from Virginia, it's come down past Oregon Inlet, it's come down past uh, Hatteras, it's wrapped around and it's headed, uh, gone past Ocracoke, on down as far south as Cape Lookout. But once you hit Cape Lookout, you see the water temperatures warm up. Now again, take a look at the, the uh, scale right now. We started off, the lowest temperature was 47 degrees, now it's 40 degrees. And you can see the highest temperature they've got registered there is only 75 degrees. So let's move on forward. Things start to change once we get into uh, March. There. Now, unfortunately, we have a big white splotch right over uh, just uh, the point of Hatteras North that's hiding the fact that that cold water is starting to migrate north. Right there from the point of Hatteras North is where the cold water is. We're looking in the 40s, beach water temperatures in the, in the mid 40s. But look at the point of Hatteras South. It starts warming up. It warms up tremendously, 10, 15 degrees. And in fact, you can, if you can see it on your computer screen right now, there's some yellow that's still going on into uh, core banks. We have, I'm going to stop right here. We have cold water eddies and warm water eddies. These things come off of the, the Gulf Stream. 
Warm water uh, eddies rotate to the right. Cold water eddies rotate to the left. And generally speaking, cold water eddies will wrap around warm water eddies. So as you're going, you'll see temp temperature differences, but you'll also have current flow differences. And I'm going to throw up everybody, if you go offshore fishing, everybody's familiar with what you're seeing right now. That is a weed line. You'll see temperature breaks. Well, not only is the temperature different, but it's because there's a different current flow. And those weed lines, the sargasso weed, uh, congregate, or, or debris actually, will congregate right there on those lines where the temperature is different, but it's actually a different current because usually it's a different eddy that you're coming against. One other thing I'll throw out, and I haven't heard about this in, in many years, uh, usually when you hear uh, about a cold stun event, you usually hear about uh, on the inside sound waters where the, the uh, water's one, two, three, four feet deep, gets real cold for an extended period of time, and fish such as speckled trout get cold, stun, and they float to the top. Well, it happens offshore too. Uh, during this time of year, transitional times of year, like March, uh, you'll get real, it could be 20 degree difference. And all of a sudden, they're, they're abutting each other. These water temperature differences are abutting each other. And the fish is swimming from one to the other, and he gets stunned. Again, I haven't heard of an offshore cold stun event in a number of years. Doesn't mean it doesn't happen, but um, it does happen. Now, this is April. Look at April. That cold water is migrating on north off of the, uh, the outer banks. And I'll tell you one thing. I live on Bogue Banks. That's where... Emerald Isle, um, uh, Atlantic Beach, Pine Knoll Shores, Indian Beaches, that island. Always in like the second or third week of April, the beach water temperature will just jump. Not only just two degrees, but maybe five degrees, maybe seven degrees all in one week. And it's all part and parcel of the cold water Labrador current going north, the uh, warm waters from the Gulf Stream coming on in closer. The, they move in closer during the summertime. They move out further. The, the uh, eastern, or excuse me, the western boundary of the Gulf Stream moves out further during the wintertime. So it's in April. That's when uh, here in Bogue Banks, the beach water temperature will jump up five, seven degrees within a week. Now let's progress this even further. We're in April right now. Let's see if I can move us um, into May. Again, now look at the temperature gauge. You see now the, the coldest temperature in May, they've got it 58 degrees. Uh, and the warmest temperature was past 70, we're into 80 degree. Look on the east side of North Carolina or the east side of Cape Lookout. It's got the cooler water. Look at Pamlico Sound. What was the coldest? It's now warmed up into the 70s. <laughs> Just wait, it gets even warmer. Uh, and as you go on down south in the Cape Fear area, you see how warm that is. All right, that's May. Again, I can't stress, this happens every year. You can document each month and compare each month to the year prior or years prior, and they're going to be almost identical. All right, let's jump on into hopefully June, if I can figure out how to operate this here, Funkel machinery. Here we go. There's very distinctive, the point of Hatteras. Uh, and again, the temperature gauge is from 69 low to 84 high. But the point I had is you see that cold water is just lifting on up. You can almost at this time of year at the point of Hatteras, and you guys that go surf fishing know this, put your right foot in one water, in the water, and your left foot in the, in the water, and you're going to have like a 10 degree temperature change. It's almost quite literal. It's almost quite literal. And again, the guys that... Uh, fish off of there. No, that's that's true. Look at Pamlico Sound. It's starting to heat up. It's starting to get like the um, the Gulf Stream. All right, that is June. Let's move forward on into July. Look at Pamlico Sound. Yepper, that's in the mid 80s or in the low 80s at least in Pamlico Albemarle Sound. The sound waters have warmed up. Uh, the Gulf Stream is also, it's all about the same. Again, look at the cold waters. Now the coldest waters like Oregon Inlet North as that Labrador current is uh, migrating on north. All right, that's July. Let's go on into uh, August. This is where it really starts to get fun. August, again, look at the temperature gauge. The low, coldest temperature is 77 degrees and goes up to 87 degrees 
So it can be a little deceptive if you're just looking at the colors. The colors do change because the temperature scale changes. Again, this is from Rutgers uh, University. Pamlico Sound is in the 80s. You're seeing that the uh, beach water temperatures are still cold on the northern beach. That will migrate north. All right, let's go on into, uh, that's August. Let's go on into the fun month of September. You can see the same thing going on. Again, that's deceptive. That cold blue that you're seeing on the northern part of the of North Carolina, that's in the 70s. That's in the 70s. The uh, Big Rock area, it's mid-80s. It's like 85 degrees as you go out into the uh, Gulf Stream. All right, let's continue on with this. Let's go into... Um, uh, what's next? October. Things start cooling down a bit. Now, one thing I do want to stress, these are sea surface temperatures. It's the surface of the water. Some areas, particularly when you go south of Hatteras during the summertime, it's the same temperature on the top as it is 100 feet down. That's not always the case, particularly when you go up north. Now, once we get into the fall and the winter time, as we know we're dominated by a northerly wind. Cool air will blow off the land mass and will cool down the sea water surface temperatures. And it can fluctuate on a day by day or week by week basis because of that, because of the air temperature, cold, is blowing off of the, uh, the land mass on into the uh, waters. Let's jump on into, let's see, where are we at? This is uh, October. Let's go on into November. Look at the Pamlico Sound. It's going back. It's in the 50s now. Where we were in the mid-80s uh, in the, the summertime, it's now in the 50s. And you can see that the little warm bands of uh, eddies are coming towards the, the Raleigh Bay area. And the Gulf Stream is migrating uh, further on out to sea out uh, east. Now, I do want to bring this up. When places like the uh, Pamlico Sound, Noose River, it gets like 90 degrees Plus, the higher the water temperature, the lower the dissolved oxygen. And it can get to the point where there'll be areas of, I'll pick on the Noose River, where there's uh, water that has no oxygen and fish die. We used to get the scare about, it's Fisteria, it's, it's the flesh-eating thing because there's dead fish, there's 10,000 menhaden that are dead. Well, the menhaden are that big, I can put them all on my, that 10,000 on my desktop. And the main thing is, is they've run, they don't have any oxygen and they, they die. And yes, they will get sores because they're stressed. I've also seen a crabs, blue crabs, come out of the water because there's no oxygen in the water. And have you ever heard of a flounder walk? That's where flounders come up to the surface of the water. And the reason why that'll happen in like July, uh, August, September, September, October, September pri primarily, is that they're coming to the top to breathe. The peanut shad, you see the little, it looks like it's raining, but there's no rain. It's not a uh, finger mullet. Uh, the, the peanut shads will be on top of the water. They're just splashing around. And the reason why, they're trying to breathe. And that's why. When we have that hot water, there is no oxygen. Critters don't like it. They'll die. They'll try to escape. They'll do whatever they have to do to uh, breathe. Now, let's go on and conclude this the way we started. Let's go to uh, right now, or December 8th, 2024. Those are the seawater surface temperatures. You can see, again, Pamlico Sound is half the temperature it was during the summertime. It's in the 40s as opposed to the 80s and 90s during the summertime. The Gulf Stream is, although moving out, you'll see that Raleigh Bay area is the hot spot. And the fishing reports we've been getting to date uh, supports that. When I was the coordinator for the Tag Giant Bluefin Tuna Conservation Series, that was a key area to go catch bluefin tunas. And we've already this year had bluefins uh, brought in at 930 pounds. I've been hearing more about black drum. I just saw a picture, wish I hadn't, maybe I can find it, uh, of a red drum schools of them congregating around the pilings at Jeanette's Pier up in Nags Head. So it's been a very fascinating time of year. I'll leave you with this that again, I can't stress this enough, that this repeats. Seawater surface temperatures repeat, not exactly day by day, you know, uh, today, a year ago today, but a week or so, uh, barring anything highly unusual, seawater temperatures do the same thing. That's why you catch fish at certain times of year. That's why the coast of North Carolina has its own environment. Same way each year where, uh, again, I'm on Bogue Banks, 
the Havelock weather, which is Havelock as the bird flies is 10, 15 miles away from the coast, is completely different than what it is along bug banks during the wintertime and during the summertime. Why? Because of the seawater surface temperatures. Enough of that. I'm Bill Hitchcock. I hope you've been, uh, enjoyed this. If you have any ideas that you would like for us to show, showcase, discuss here on the program, send them to me, billhitchcock at mail.com, billhitchcock at mail.com, or post it up at YouTube. Until next time, see ya.